Masks, social distancing, COVID-19, the year that was 2020. The patients and families taking all of the extra precautions to keep themselves and their kiddos safe, the healthcare workers, nurses, doctors, putting themselves on the front line and sacrificing their own health for those in their care. On today's Live, Learn, and Play podcast, we talk with nurse superhero Amanda Andrews. You may remember Amanda from our Instagram story featuring Arkansas children's nurses who went to New York City to help with one of the early outbreaks of the pandemic. Amanda discusses what she learned and offers a look back to where we were in 2020 and the hope and optimism going into this new year. Now, here's Amanda. On this episode of the Live, Learn, and Play podcast, I'm joined by Amanda Andrews. She is a special staffing nurse here at Arkansas Children's, and I actually had the pleasure of interviewing Amanda when she, well, we'll find out more about her story, but we had a unique meeting um, in April of this year, and so this is my first time meeting Amanda in person, and she has had a really... uh, unique year. I know we all have. And so we wanted to get her thoughts, um, just being in the medical profession and some of the opportunities she has had this year to kind of reflect on 2020. So Amanda, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. So we are going to go back to December 31st, 2019. And I know like so many people, we had a lot of expectations for the year. So what were some of your goals looking back at uh, New Year's Eve last year? What were some of your goals and thoughts for the year ahead? I think I was actually working on New Year's Eve last year. I just picked up an extra shift. So, um, you know, whenever I got home, I... I don't know if my husband and I necessarily made like any big goals. Um, I kind of wanted to um, just kind of move forward in my my nursing career some. Um, We were planning on remodeling a house, and um, that's all since been postponed for 2021 since this year's been so crazy. Um, We show horses, actually, so we had some big plans for going to horse shows, and my son was supposed to start really showing horses, which, of course, got postponed due to COVID. So when did you realize 2020 was going to be different than any other year? So um, at the beginning of 2020, you know, we were hearing about um, this virus over in China that, you know, maybe was a little bit more different than what they had seen, maybe a little bit more serious. And then it really escalated pretty quickly within a couple of weeks. And then you were hearing about it, um, you know, in Washington State. We're in Arkansas where it's, you know, so far away from Washington that we didn't really think it was going to happen here. And then all of a sudden, the word pandemic's being used. And we're in a full-fledged pandemic. So what was going through your mind when you came back to the hospital and everyone was wearing masks and PPE the next day? I feel like our hospital did, did a really good job of like making sure there was cohesion and uh, not instilling fear into us. But the mask, like from the beginning, I think is what kept our numbers from skyrocketing initially. Um, it was... It took a little bit of getting used to. I mean, during this the time of the year that the pandemic started here for us was whenever our traditional respiratory season was kind of like winding down. Um, so we had already been pretty used to wearing masks and a whole lot of PPE. And for us to have to continue wearing it like through even the summertime and everywhere we go in the hospital was a big change. But I feel like we adapted okay. It was, um, I guess, pretty scary at first just not knowing what to expect kind of day to day because with COVID rules changed especially in the beginning almost daily um, about what to expect and what the CDC guidelines were going to be for that day I would say that was probably the most stressful part as a nurse just not knowing what to expect Um, even though like for my job I can my my job changes like daily so depending on where I'm at so I feel like I was pretty adaptable but having to add even more adaptations to that was even more difficult. So how were the leaders and your team communicating through this through this time? Were you meeting almost daily or, or what was communication like? So Tammy Diamond Wells is our director over special staffing team. Um, and then Leslie Easley is our acting PCM clinical educator and um, she's actually a bedside nurse as well. So They did a really good job of, I know Tammy and Leslie were meeting multiple times a day, and Leslie was really great about sending out frequent emails or even texting us if we were at work and changes were needing to be made. Um, 
they were always extremely calm with presenting it. And Leslie, whenever she was able to, would come out to the units that we were on and make sure that we were coping okay with everything. Um, Tammy did a really get, great job about like checking in on our mental health during all of this. Um, I, I felt like in the beginning we were getting updates almost as soon as like Tammy and Leslie knew what to knew the information to give us. And how was your team and the, the people that you work with often, how was everyone reacting at this moment? You know, initially I think people were frustrated by just the frequent changes just because as soon as we got used to something, then it would change. And then pretty soon we realized, like, this is here to stay. So we just all kind of decided that it was going to be better to kind of, I guess, grin and bear it. And we're all in this together. And that's kind of the mentality I've been seeing throughout the hospital even now. Like, it's just here to stay and we're all in it together. So take us through the timeline. You were um, adjusting to all the changes here. And then um, you got a call to care for patients outside of Arkansas. Take us through how that happened and what you did. Yeah, so um, whenever the pandemic first happened, we were canceling like all non-essential surgeries. There were a couple of nurses on the resource team, which Mandy Jones, who is also a member of the special staffing team with me and one of my dearest friends, um, she actually went to New York with me. And we had been talking prior to getting the notification about how since we're slow here, like maybe our resources would be better used somewhere else. And so we talked to Tammy about it, and I didn't really think it was going to go anywhere. And then... Um, all of a sudden, we get this email saying, if you want to put your name in a hat, and it just so happened that mine and Mandy's names were both drawn from the hat. We didn't really know about the New York situation. I had actually planned on going to Louisiana to travel just because it was closer to home, and you'd seen on New York how terrible it was and how terrifying it was. I honestly didn't know if I was going to be like mentally able to do that or leave my child at home for weeks and go so far away to take care of patients. Um But then I was contacted by New York Presbyterian. We kind of talked about their situation there and what my situation would be if I went there. And it honestly just sounded like it was the place that we were needed most and where I needed to be. I was notified that I was one of the people selected to go on a Monday. Tuesday, I talked to New York Presbyterian and said I needed to talk to my husband. Wednesday, I had had my flight stuff booked and I flew out at like something crazy. I was at the airport at like 3 a.m., on Friday morning. So everything happened really fast. Yeah. Once you put your name, I, I think that's amazing. You just said, yes, I'll go, not knowing 100% what um, what you were even going and heading, heading into. Um, so you mentioned you um, have a son at home, so you're a mom, um, you have a husband. What were the conversations like at home before you went? Oh, my husband was not super thrilled that I had wanted to do this, not because he was going to be left with Jackson. He's an amazing father, Um, but more so like what was going to happen if I got sick while I was up there. My mom was actually pretty upset that I had chosen to go, but then she, um, we talked about it later and she was like, you know, I'm actually really proud that you have chosen to do this, but if something were to happen to you while you're up there, just know that you know, we're not going to be able to get to you. It's a pandemic. Um, so their their concerns more came out of a place of fear for my safety. Um, but I was just like, you know, this is what, this is how you've raised me. You've instilled these values into me. So let me go and be useful where I'm needed most right now. Was there anything in particular that New York Presbyterian said to you that made you feel more comfortable about your decision? Um, yeah. So I did ask if there were adequate amounts of PPE and um, something really neat there, the celebrities that live in and around New York actually were using their private airplanes to go and get PPE to make sure the hospitals were adequately provided for. It was really neat. So you whirlwind uh, travel up to New York um, in the middle of the pandemic, or really at the start of the pandemic. What was, what was it like compared to what you expected? The lady that was in charge of all of our traveling absolutely would not let us off the airplane unless we had an N95 mask on. Like we could not set ground on New York soil without N95s on. That was like a an eye opener. The airport was totally empty, like totally empty. We had to get on the subway for something. I don't remember what it was, but we were literally the only passengers on the subway. And I'd never been to New York before, so I don't think I fully grasped how crowded New York City actually is. Um, but the people that we went with that had been there before, they were just like this is crazy. It's nothing 
like it should be. It's a it's a ghost town. Yuri, what was what was the mood like in New York City? Oh, it was so solemn, um, sad. I do remember we got a chance to walk around Central Park everywhere we went. New York Press told us just keep your N95 on, um, and you're you know go see Central Park while you're here. And we were you know some of the only ones out and about. There were a few people walking their dogs. I remember um, running into a couple walking their sheep a doodle, um, and then we were telling them what we were there for, and they were just like so grateful. They hadn't had COVID. None of their fam- family members that I know of had COVID, but they said just like seeing their neighbors and their whole city hurting, they were just like super grateful that we had come in to to assist. And how long were you in New York? I think just a little bit over three weeks, maybe almost four weeks. And how did Jackson do while you were away? So my family is so amazing. My husband is wonderful. Um, every night I got to FaceTime Jackson and read him a bedtime story. That was, my family made sure we got to do that every night. I talked to him multiple times um, throughout the day whenever I could. We've just used FaceTime a whole lot. He um, he did really pretty well with it. Now whenever I leave for work, he wants to know what hospital I'm going to and if I'm going to be at New York. I bet, yes, because you said he's four? Yes. Okay, so yeah, he thinks you, you travel and leave yeah. ev- every yeah. day when you leave. Um, when you came back... Uh, from New York, how did that change you as a nurse, as a mom, and as a person? In New York, I got to exercise some really good critical care skills. So I was burn ICU and PICU cross-trained. So here at Children's, we have the only burn unit in the state, and we take care of infants to 100 years old. Uh, since we're the only one in the state, and sometimes even surrounding states were just the closest place to come to. So taking care of adults was not something foreign to me since that's our larger burn population versus kids. And then in PICU, you know, we get the sickest of the sick kids here. So, um, and respiratory stuff is kind of our specialty because that's what kids tend to be the most sick with. So um, I felt like I was pretty decently prepared whenever I went to New York, just having some adult experience. And then COVID, whenever you get to the root of it, is a, re- is a severe respiratory illness. And we work with some of the best doctors, in my opinion, in the world here. So having seen all of that, um, I feel like I got to exercise some really, really good critical thinking skills as well, which you can never have enough of as a nurse, especially an ICU nurse. So your training here at a children's hospital actually impacted your uh, how you cared for the patients in New York? Oh, absolutely. Um, so it was a really unique experience um, at, the ho- at the particular hospital I was at. We were actually having to FaceTime with some attendings because we were trying to keep the, the attendings well enough to be able to care for all of the sick people of New York. So um, there were fellows and residents there, and they were really open to some suggestions that we had um, as far as we... We do our sedation a lot more differently in pediatrics than you do in the adult world. Um, So they were like really open to some opinions that we had about how to maybe better use, utilize sedation to keep the patients comfortable while they're on the, on the ventilator. Um, And then with having burn patients, whenever some of our burn patients are severely enough burn, they can actually get an injury to their lungs from all of the heat and smoke, um, which causes one of the most severe respiratory diseases. I mean, it, it's really rough on them. So um, that was kind of on par with what I saw with some of our COVID stuff up there. So yeah, having taken care of patients here, I felt like prepared me really well to take care of the patients in New York. So how did that make you feel that your training here was being, um, uh, that you could utilize it there as well, and they were actually looking to you for advice? How did that make you feel? I don't know that they were necessarily looking to me for advice, but they they did take my opinion in, into consideration. Um, it made me feel so proud that the doctors and the staff and the nurses here um, had prepared me well enough that I felt confident enough even suggesting anything. That's awesome. So what practices and ideas did you bring back with you that you have started or adopted that you still do now with patients here at Arkansas Children's? Oh, yeah. So going back to the critical thinking skills, like you just can't have enough of that. Taking care of those patients up there was like taking care of the most sick burn patient and the most sick PICU patients I've ever had combined and then paired because there literally just wasn't enough staff. Even with um, all of us working to all of us that were there, that they were still um, extremely short staffed just with the overload of COVID patients. Like our 
I remember um, being floated to one of their ICUs, and it was literally made out of, um, like, tarps that were zippered together and that had plexiglass like this not even real plexiglass it was very innovative actually um ways to make rooms and it had a big like filter in it to help filter out all of the particles it, it was just crazy it was the most interesting thing I've ever seen so I'm actually on the special pathogens team here at children's that was formed back whenever Ebola was a concern um, so whenever we're allowed to meet again I think some of those rooms and how we um, were able to or how they were able to quickly put into place, like they turned conference room. I was in a conference room um, where those zippered tarps were at um, that had been turned into patient rooms. So if we were ever in a situation like that, just some, you know, input, having seen it firsthand on what works and what could have maybe been a little bit better. Going back to when you left New York, did you feel like you had done all you could do or did you feel like there was still work left to be done? So we got there... um, you know, at, at the end of March, um, and then we were there through the whole month of April, and by the time we left, I think maybe COVID was getting just maybe a little bit better. You know, I think as a nurse, you always feel like you can do more. That's just part of our nature, but it felt nice to hear the staff there say that because we were there, they were actually able to take a little bit of a break before we left, and there were still tons of travelers coming in. I mean, we were such a small portion of the people who came to New York to help. Um, I worked with people, I think I worked with a nurse from like Australia and one from Kenya, um, just people from all over the country, all over the world. It was, it was so neat. Looking back now at all of 2020, what do you wish people knew about this virus and the pandemic? So I hear people say a lot that it's just like the flu. Um, it is not just like the flu. Um, we had patients in New York that were... I mean, so, so extremely sick. So they were they were clotting their blood so fast that they had to be put on a heparin, on, on a blood thinner, continuous infusion on heparin. Um, but even though they were on that, they were still forming really huge clots. And I remember um, getting report from nurses and then telling me that my patient had a pulmonary embolism, a blood clot in their lung. And usually that's enough for them to be put in the ICU alone. But it was mentioned as like an afterthought, like that was the least of our concerns at that moment. And that was like for almost every single patient that was there. Wow. Now we're about to start a new year. um, And this is why one of the reasons we wanted to just get your reflection on 2020. But um, what are some of your personal and professional goals for 2021? So I don't know that I want to necessarily have a more goal oriented year, but more like a value oriented year. So like focus more on having compassion for myself and for others. Um, I think this year is, if anything, it should have taught us to be more forgiving, especially to ourselves. Um, It's been hard for everybody. Um, I think it's easier to forgive others around you and then, you know, your shortcomings, you hold yourself to such a high standard that maybe we all just need to take a deep breath and just be thankful that we've made it through 2020 in one piece. It's been a heck of a year for everybody. And since you do have an insider view of what is happening at the hospital, maybe you could get a, give us an update. You mentioned that you were on a pathogen. Um, what was the exact name? The special pathogen team. Okay. Um, so it's um, made up of several. There's so many nurses, wonderful nurses on there and doctors. Um, before COVID, we were just meeting to discuss what we would do should we end up with a, um Ebola-type patient, like how they would travel to us. We... Our facility wouldn't be is not the designated one to care for Ebola patients, but more like hold over until we can get them to where they need to be. But if we did have a huge outbreak of something like that, or even you know COVID, um, what our plans would be, who would take care of them, and how, um, just to keep everybody the, as safe as possible. Well, those um, Amanda, thank you. Those were all the questions I had prepared, but is there anything else um, that you would like to share with our listeners just looking back at the year and the year ahead? Um, Just keep wearing your mask. Mask work as evidenced by our our population right now. Usually we're full of kids with rhinoenteral and other respiratory viruses. 
right now, I think with all the cleaning and stuff in place and people social distancing like they're supposed to, hopefully we can keep the kids of Arkansas safe during this pandemic so we can focus on helping the COVID patients. Excellent. Well, Amanda, thank you for your time. Thank you for how you champion children here in Arkansas and then for caring for patients in New York. That is amazing. So we appreciate you and your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again to Amanda for coming by to discuss what was an extremely difficult experience in New York City. How lucky are we to have people like Amanda at Arkansas Children's who are always putting their patients before themselves and sometimes even their own families. Thank you again to all of the healthcare workers across the country and the world who have sacrificed so much in order to care for everyone affected by this pandemic. I don't know about you, but I am ready to turn the calendar and begin a new year full of challenges, but most importantly, love and hope. Until then, stay safe, wear your mask, socially distance, and let's ring in 2021 healthy and safe. Happy New Year from Arkansas Children's.